our family created Simple Times Farm because we wanted to get back to a simpler way of life. Uh, we're city folk. We were um, living in Florence um, in a big house, and uh, we had a series of events happen in our family, which just made us reconsider life. And so as a family, we all decided that we wanted to um, kind of simplify. So all of this was kind of a part of our personal journey to simplify, um, but because I am an educator, I decided to borrow the community, um, besides the fact then bring, to bring people in to kind of um, stress the simplicity through hard work um, of not just how life used to be, but how we can simplify today. Um, we have an organic garden and we talk about nutrition. So for the first year then, uh, we were truly homesteading. Uh, then. After a year then, as we were expanding, we had to put in a well, so we did get electricity. So we then just slowly started uh, accumulating our animals. We have goats, which are Nigora goats, which is a cross between a Nigerian dwarf and which is good for milk and the uh, angora which is good for fiber so we have the best of both words and then we have our sheep which are um, a heritage breed of shetland sheep all of them are miniature so that it's not anything that's big that's going to scare the kids that they can uh, easily come and pet and feed and not be overwhelmed or overpowered uh, we bought emus because we decided to um, try you can eat emu it's dark meat but you can also get the emu oil from them um, and then the eggs that they lay. Um, but we, we really enjoy having our emus. And then we have peacocks and that's just for to look at. They're beautiful. <laughs> and then turkeys and all sorts of different kinds of chickens. Um, then we have three horses, which we do ride and we plan on, we have a, we do have an Amish buggy and uh, we plan on training one of our horses to pull the Amish buggy as a part of something that they can do here. Um, then we have our Jersey cow who had a baby, so we have two Jersey cows and that's who we do uh, raw milk. And so the kids, um, mostly Anastasia, but uh, everybody has to have a turn uh, milking the cow. And, uh, and then we have our miniature donkeys. We have a Sicilian and a Mediterranean, and then they had a baby, so we have baby June. She's adorable. And uh, we give donkey cart rides. Uh, that's one of the things that we do. And so um, we really have a menagerie of all sorts of different animals, um, but um, it's, it's enough to be able to give people a feel for um, how the barnyard used to be back in the colonial times. And so as kids come and uh, tour, uh, they get a chance to make candles or milk a cow um, and uh, pet the animals and feed the sheep and the goats. We also show them how they uh, wash clothes, how they used to wash clothes with a ringer and a washboard. It's just about relaxing and enjoying life and um, family and spending time with family. Putting it all together, it's been uh, two, almost two and a half years and uh, it's only gonna get bigger. Each year then when people come back, it'll be something new. We already have a uh, grant with the disabilities in Lawrence, and so there's a group of consumers that come out and they work in the garden, and we talk about nutrition and exercise and healthy living, and we really enjoy uh, this kind of work. And then we have youth groups come out and we have a, an evening thing where we roast marshmallows around the fire and do a scavenger hunt for youth groups. And we also offer a nature trail that they can walk through. You'd be surprised how much you can, how much exercise you can get done without even realizing it because you're enjoying the outdoors and the animals and getting from one place to another that uh, it doesn't really even feel like exercise. One of the things that amazes me to have kindergartners and first graders go, you have such a lovely garden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, for them to even recognize, you know, that um, the work that's put into it, uh, one of the things that we are growing is rice. 
and um, they all get a chance. They break open the kernels, and they can see right now, um, as they broke open the kernels, it's rice milk that uh, they can see. And so next time they go to the store and they see that, you know, in the container in the dairy that says rice milk, they'll know exactly where it came from. There's a lot of adults that don't even know that. Uh, and then I explain to them the process once we um, harvest the rice that we go through. The comment that we get the most is, um, it's so peaceful out here. Here. And it really is. All of our animals um, just have kind of this uh, peace about them that um, people really enjoy and they get re-energized when they come and they hang out. It really gives the kids a chance to come out and, um, and learn. A lot of people don't realize that every Mil all the milk that you drink comes from cows or every chicken that you eat and that you buy from the store was on a farm somewhere, um, whether it was a big processing plant or, uh, or a small farm. Um, all the chickens come from the same place, from chicken. <laughs> One thing I do get a lot of as we go and we do uh, shows and people see like at the fairs and things like that and festivals and uh, people see us in our costumes, um, they ask, do we wear regular clothes? We had a youth group come and one of the things that I do when the, they first arrive is they all have to put their cell phones in a basket. And um, all of them were like, you're asking me to do what? This is, and they just reluctantly was, was you know, handing in the cell phone. And do you know by the end of the evening, they had forgotten that they had phones. And just with the events that were going on and the activities, um, they, they really did, for that moment, forget about technology.